Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Many of you know that we regularly go through our YouTube comments to determine which song to cover next. And I want to shout out to our subscriber, Chris R., who wrote, For more sewed recommendations, question is a wild one. He also went on to recommend Hypnotize, which I'm sure we'll get to soon, but for the moment, I am on board for a wild song by System of a Down. Thank you, Chris, and let's get to it. Already, I'm trying to figure out the time signatures. There are definitely multiple time signatures going on here. I heard a 5-4 at one point. I heard a 6-8 at one point. Um, but it's so fluid moving between them. I really dig it. Okay, we're going to go back. Of course. Uh, oh. <laughs> I, I have to say my heart was like, oh man, the poor bird. <sighs> despite growing up in an orchard and having to keep birds away from cherries. Um, but we're going to start back here anyway. You know, I just realized this makes so much sense to start with this, this symbol for sure, because within the lyrics, which I read ahead of time, of course, there's a lot of questioning, question, right, of um, where you go after you die. And there's a moment where it's asking, if you know when you fly, so that really applies to the bird who flies and dies. Okay, I get it, it makes sense. Such a beautiful first guitar line. So delicate and hypnotizing. Go back, what was that time signature again? I think it's five. Or I might be wrong then. Ah, we might actually be in an eight. Let's check it out. One more time. almost say it's more 10-8. I know 5-4, 10-8, they're super similar, but I have a 1 da 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 So I have a 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, as far as subdivisions go. And sometimes a composer would choose to write that as 10-8 to have that flexibility with the triplet subdivision. But there's also the duplet subdivision, right? And so sometimes people will choose to write that as 10-8 instead of 5-4, but uh, ultimately, a lot of musicians these days aren't writing these things down, so it just matters how they feel it. That's definitely a five four. Berries ready for two ghosts are no different than you. Ghosts are now waiting for you. Are you 
little sweet berries ready for you Ghosts are no different than you Ghosts are now waiting for you Are you dreaming? Ah. I just love the way that Serge tumbles through this enunciation. It's so, um, it's so unobstructed in his vocal tract. It feels like it just tumbles out into his mouth, manages to go ping, 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 ping along with these other, other resonant spots in the path. It's just, it feels effortless, yet it has great natural tone quality. <sighs> Berries ready for two ghosts to know different than you. Ghosts Love the soft holding of that. Are you? Sweet berries ready for two ghosts to know different than you. Ghosts are now waiting for you. Are you dreaming? Dreaming the night. Dreaming all right. This looks cool. Ah. Uh. I'm excited to see what, what's about to happen here. I hear a big, big moment coming up, but I just wanted to add in here. I'd read that this stemmed from a dream that Shavo had about a boy giving a girl berries and not knowing that, or she didn't know they were poisonous. Maybe he didn't either. But anyhow, I like that it seems like we have recreated various portions of that dream. And it's just so interesting to hear in the lyrics these questions about that dream. And it feels like there's a lot of questioning of just what are we here on this planet for? Are we dreaming? Okay. <sighs> Waiting for you are you so much death. Sweet berries ready for you. Ghosts are no different than you. Ghosts are now waiting for you. Are you dreaming? Dreaming. I love the harmonies here. The lines there are so sustained and they feel really dramatic as well. And the presentation visually of this feels to me like they're setting it in an operatic way. No, their voices don't have the spacing or the enunciation that I would expect from opera, right? The vowels tend to be a little more tall in opera than what we have here at the moment. Um, it's a very much more spread, but uh, that sustain, the power that's continued, and the drama of this moment does feel really operatic. It's interesting. Dreaming. I just love the way they add those slides. Um, it feels like little pleads on dreaming. It's a beautiful expression. I'm waiting for you. Are you? And here, I think we've got the six, eight going as far as time signature goes. You know, there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that kind of lulling back and forth is often associated um, with lullabies or being on a ship and the rocking motion of waves. Um, sometimes it's associated with galloping or movement. But I think that it's interesting um, that it's asking about dreaming in here and you have the visual of dreaming and this six day underneath because it could be the motion of falling, of lulling to sleep. And you, ghosts are now waiting for you. Are you dreaming? Dreaming the night. Dreaming all right. It's beautiful. things 
things I like about their harmonies is that they'll move in harmonic motion together and then at times let a voice just soar in, maybe up, cross over, and then do its own movement. So there's both, uh, there's both a partnership in the harmony and an independence. That was all partnered. And then we have an independent moment tied up. Right, that's really cool. Something there is ready for two ghosts you know different than you. Ghosts you're now waiting for you. Are you sweet? Ready for two ghosts you know different than you. Ghosts you're now waiting for you. Are you dreaming? was one of those sweet, sweet surge moments where there's something in the raw tone quality of his voice that just hits me emotionally. It's, it feels so vulnerable, um, so direct to, uh, to feeling essentially. He's ready for two ghosts or no different than you. Ghosts are now waiting for you. Are you dreaming? I think it has to do probably with the like, fast vibrato that happens in there. The way that his vocal track doesn't have any sort of hindrance in the sound. The sound is so immediate. But there was also a really great moment, which I hadn't caught the first time. He's so, he has so many little details he adds in for expression, which is just delightful. I'll go through it here. Ghosts are now waiting for you. Are you? Sweet berries ready for two ghosts or no different than you. You, you. He does a thing where he slides off just a tiny bit from that note. It's, it's just, it's so detailed. Really nice breast support. I just also like the way everything feels extremely light in this section. Peppered in. Such a contrast to the larger chorus, it's more extended and dramatic. It's really got um, a big difference between what I call verses and chorus. You, sweet berries, ready for two ghosts or no different than you. Ghosts are now waiting for you. Are you dreaming? Dreaming the night. That's a great example again of that harmony that is partnered and then Serge takes a line that's more independent while I think uh, Darren is holding out a note. Dreaming, dreaming the night, dreaming all right. Do we, do we know when we fly? Whoa, <laughs> that's some crazy distortion on that vocal top line. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, that's some really intense distortion to the point of having the phonation popping in and out, right? You can hear sometimes that there's a pitch, but then there are moments where you definitely hear that that pitch is not not happening. It's like wavering in and out. <sighs> it's really intense. I don't know which one of them is doing it too. Is that Serge or Darren? I'm not sure. Wow. Wow, okay, we're gonna go back to that chorus one more time. I adore the way this feels so desperately sung. It's like it's like a cry, it's a sustained cry. I often think of opera as yelling for a long period of time and trying to make it sound pretty. 
And I feel like in some ways here, we've actually given up the pretty aspect. We've said, let's make this a cry that just hits somebody emotionally. If I were to make it pretty, I might try and round it and give it a little more warmth in the tone, but then I would lose that human rawness that is just like smacking me so hard right now. Ah, ah, I like it. Oh. It's so interesting how on E vowels, I'm continually seeing that in their style, they don't shy away from the bright, in your face, uh, almost harsh aspect that can come with an E vowel. E vowels can be the brightest of all vowels just because of the placement of the tongue. It's very far forward. Uh, often we see people moving their lips out to the side too. You don't have to, to create an E vowel, by the way, move your lips to the side. In opera, a lot of times you'll see rounding of the lips. E, and that can create a sound that's a little bit more round and tall and warm. And some people consider that pretty less harsh but then we're gonna get into a whole conversation about what is pretty, right? That's very subjective, I think. So uh, I would just say we have a different sound here that leans in to the brightness and the harshness of an E vowel. Seems very suitable to me for a particular emotional content. <laughs> This is important work. Wow. That scream silk, wow. Ah! I love the time signature! <laughs> that was cool. First of all, the instrumental interlude was all in 5-4 and it was a wild ride. Oh my goodness. You are so right, Chris. That's exactly, that's the perfect way to describe this. It, it's wild. <sighs> I like, like all of the quick shifting of the screen too. 5-4 tends to feel very abrupt and uh, jagged as a time signature. So what a great one to have lots of screen shifts in. And then, oh man, this la la la. I think the lyrics of this say la la la. But that doesn't even come close to the crazy sound that Serge is making, which I had not imagined when I saw lyrics that said la la la. It's like, oh, it's a beautiful la 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 kind of line, you know, should be <sighs> lots of moving notes perhaps. Ah! This is so cool. That flashing. Wow, wow. Oh, so much angst. so intense the way that they've shifted the um, texture and rhythmic content underneath but keeping the same melody and the same element of sustained power sustained crying it just notched up the intensity and wow I I feel really struck by the horribleness of this situation now of this girl falling over, um, looking like she's dying from these poisonous berries. The, oh, whoa. 
What a crazy dream to have. Right. It Before it was a plea, a question, and now it's turned into this desperation. Oh, that five was great. Whoa. Oh my gosh. That gut wrenching scream at the end. I, I straight up don't know if that's healthy. I don't, that sound, I don't know where it's being created. Um, sometimes singers can get away with having an unhealthy scream like once in a while. Uh, they, I've heard Serge sing in other things, and he sounds very healthy overall, so I would guess that this is made in a good area of his voice, but, I mean, we'd have to stick a camera down to, to really know um, that he wasn't making that sound with his true vocal folds, but with stuff that's around um, so that it's not damaging those true folds. Uh, but, oh, the emotional content of it is incredible. <sighs> And it might be Darren who does the scream, actually. Wow. I love how the second voice in there layers over with a much more airy um, tone quality too. Uh, wow, I mean, it, that scream sounds like this total moment of horrendous loss. It's really emotionful. Uh. Whoa. <laughs> I thought it was going to be done. <laughs> surprise ending. Whoa. Okay. One more time. That goes back to the lalas that were just surprising in the first place. Whoa. It's amazing how much System of a Down packs into such a short amount of time. It's in the, the layering of their different tones. It's in all of these different time signatures. It's in the emotional ride that we go through. Uh, this combination of very light and very heavy sounds. It's just uh, a lot and it has a huge impact. And I love getting to listen to it and analyze it. Thank you to everyone who's been guiding me in this journey through System of a Down. If you want to see some other videos of analysis on System of a Down, you can check out this post over here. May you fall more in love with music every day. <laughs>